Hello. In this video, we are going to prove the following theorem. Let A be a set. Then the following are equivalent. A is countable. A is equal to the empty set, or there is a surjective function, f, from the positive integers to A. There is an injective function, g, from A to the positive integers. Now, before we get into proving this theorem, let's first get some context. For us, we're going to say that the natural numbers is the set of integers greater than or equal to zero. And of course, the positive integers is the set of natural numbers not including zero. Now, for each natural number n, we define the following set. For each natural number n, we define the set i n to be the set of positive integers i such that i is less than or equal to n. For example, i0 is the empty set, i1 is the set containing 1, i2 is the set consisting of 1 and 2, and so on. Now, using this, our definition of a finite set is as follows. We say A is finite if there exists a natural number n such that there exists a bijection from i n to A. And this is the notation we'll use to say that there exists a bijection from this set to this set. Now our definition of a denumerable set is as follows. We say A is denumerable if there exists a bijection from the positive integers to A. And our definition of a countable set is as follows. We say A is countable if A is finite or denumerable. Now, we're going to be using two properties of countable sets in proving this theorem, and they are as follows. Every subset of the positive integers is countable. If B is a countable set and there is a bijection from A to B, then A is countable. Okay, so now let's get into proving this theorem. Now, we're trying to prove that all three of these statements are equivalent. And to prove that, we're going to prove if 1 is true, then 2 is true. If 2 is true, then 3 is true. And if 3 is true, then 1 is true. Let's start out by proving if 1 is true, then 2 is true. And to prove that, suppose 1 is true. In other words, suppose A is countable. Well then, by definition, we know that A is finite or denumerable. And we're going to show in either case, we have that 2 is true. Let's first consider the case that A is denumerable. Well then, this means that there exists a bijection from the positive integers to A. And I'm going to call that bijection F. Now, since F is a bijection from the positive integers to A, this means that F is injective and surjective. So in particular, F is surjective. And so, we have found a surjective function from the positive integers to A. Therefore, we have shown that 2 is true. So this completes the case where A is denumerable. Now let's consider the case where A is finite. Well then, this means that there exists a natural number n such that there exists a bijection from i n to A. And I'm going to call that bijection P. Now, to show that 2 is true, we're further going to split this up into two more cases. Either A is equal to the empty set, or A is not equal to the empty set. Now, if A is equal to the empty set, then we immediately see that 2 is true. So now, let's consider the case where A is not the empty set. Well then, since A is not empty, this means that A has at least one element in it. So we can choose some element in A. I'll call it a naught. And now we're going to define a function 
which we claim is a surge active function for the positive integers to A, as follows. We define a function f from the positive integers to a as follows. Given that i is a positive integer, we will set f of i equal to p of i if i is an element of i n. We will set f of i equal to a naught if i is not an element of i n. Now, this definition makes sense because given that i is a positive integer, then exactly one of these conditions is true. And therefore, f of i could only be set equal to one of these values. And in fact, no matter what value f of i is set equal to, f of i is going to be an element of a. Because p of i is an element of a, and we know a naught is an element of a. Okay, but now the claim is that f is surjective. And to prove that f is surjective, we want to show for every element a in a, there exists an element j in the positive integers such that f of j is equal to a. So to prove that, let's give ourselves an arbitrary element a in a. And from here, we want to show that there exists an element j in the positive integers such that f of j is equal to a. Now, we know that p is a bijection from i n to a. And by definition of a bijection, we know that p is surjective. Now, since p is surjective and a is an element of a, that implies that there must exist an element j in in such that p of j is equal to a. But we know that in is a subset of the positive integers by definition. So since j is an element of in, that implies j is a positive integer. And since j is a positive integer, that tells us that j belongs to the domain of f. So we can compute f of j. And if we compute f of j, well, since j is an element of in, we are going to follow along the first line. And we have that f of j is equal to p of j. And we know that p of j is equal to a. And so we have shown that there exists a positive integer j such that f of j is equal to a, and this shows that f is surjective. And so we have found a surjective function from the positive integers to a, and that tells us 2 is true. And at this point, we have exhausted all possibilities. So in the case where a is denumerable, we immediately had that 2 is true. In the case where a is finite, we split it up into two cases. If a is equal to empty set, we immediately had that 2 is true. And in the case where a is not the empty set, we have just shown that 2 is true. So we're done. We have shown if 1 is true, then 2 is true. Now let's show if 2 is true, then 3 is true. So now suppose 2 is true. In other words, we're supposing a is equal to the empty set, or there is a surjective function f from the positive integers to a. And from here, we want to show that 3 is true. And in doing so, we have two possibilities. And we're going to show in either case, we have that 3 is true. Let's consider the first possibility, which is that a is equal to the empty set. Now, if a is equal to the empty set, then the empty set is an injective function from a to the positive integers. And so we see that there exists an injective function from a to the positive integers, therefore 3 is true. But wait a minute, why is the empty set an injective function from a to the positive integers? Well, what does it mean for the empty set to be an injective function from a to the positive integers? Well, first of all, to say that the empty set is a function from A to the positive integers means the following. One way of putting it 
is we have that the empty set is a subset of the Cartesian product, A times the piles of integers. And for every element A and A, there is a unique element J in the piles of integers such that A comma J belongs to the empty set. Now, clearly, the empty set is a subset of this set because we know that the empty set is a subset of every set. And also, this second statement is true as well because since we are assuming A is equal to the empty set, this statement is equivalent to if we replace A with the empty set. But this statement is vacuously true because this is a statement about every element of the empty set. So this tells us that the empty set is a function from A to the positive integers. But how do we know that the empty set is an injective function from A to the positive integers? Well, to say that this function is injective means the following. To be injective means for every two elements, a1 and a2 and a, if the output values yielded by the function are equal, then their input values, a1 and a2, are equal. But again, since we're assuming a is equal to the empty set, this is equivalent to if we replace a with the empty set. But this statement is vacuously true because this is a statement about all elements of the empty set. So that tells us that the empty set is indeed an injective function from A to the positive integers. So this is true. So in the case where A is equal to the empty set, we have that three is true. Now let's consider the other case, which is if there is a surjective function F from the positive integers to A. Well then, we define the following function. We define a function g from a to the positive integers, which is given by this formula. Now, this function is well defined because if we consider any element a in a, well, since f is surjective, we know that there exists an element i in the positive integers such that f of i is equal to a, and therefore this set is non-empty. So this set is a non-empty subset of the positive integers. But if you recall, every non-empty subset of positive integers has a smallest element. So this smallest element must exist. So it makes sense that we can set g of a equal to the smallest element of this set. But now we want to show that this function is injective. Now to show that this function is injective, let's give ourselves two arbitrary elements, a1 and a2 in a. And to prove injectivity, we want to prove if g of a1 is equal to g of a2, then a1 is equal to a2. So let's suppose that g of a1 is equal to g of a2. Now, by definition of our function g, if we replace a with a1, then g of a1 is the smallest element of this set. Well, therefore, g of a1 belongs to the set itself. So since g of a1 belongs to the set, we can replace i with g of a1. So we have that g of a1 is a positive integer such that f of g of a1 is equal to a1. And similarly, we will get f of g of a2 equals a2. Now, since g of a1 is equal to g of a2, if we send these two guys into the function f, the output values will be equal. So f of g of a1 is equal to f of g of a2. But f of g1 is equal to a1, and f of g2 is equal to a2. So that tells us a1 is equal to a2. So we've shown if g of a1 is equal to g of a2, then a1 is equal to a2. And this shows that g is injective. And so we've shown that there exists an injective function from a to the positive integers. So 3 is true. And so we've shown if 2 is true, then 3 is true. Finally, let's show if 3 is true, then 1 is true. To do so, let's suppose that 3 is true. In other words, we're supposing that there exists an injective function g from a to the positive integers. Now, every function is surjective to its range. 
So G is surjective to its range. And I'm going to call the range of G J. And since G is injective and G is surjective to its range J, this means that G is a bijection from A to J. So there exists a bijection from A to J, which means we can use this notation. Now we know that every output value of the function G is a positive integer. So the range of G is a subset of the positive integers. And we know that every subset of the positive integers is countable, so J is countable. But since J is countable and there is a bijection from A to J, well then according to this result, that implies that A is countable. And so we've shown that 1 is true. So we've shown if 3 is true, then 1 is true. And so we're done. We have shown if 1 is true, then 2 is true. If 2 is true, then 3 is true. And if 3 is true, then 1 is true. That tells us we have proven that all three of these statements are equivalent. And so this completes the proof. And so yeah, that's pretty much it for this video.